Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please be seated. <coughs> your Excellency, with your permission, I'll begin. His Excellency the Governor will present the following Australian Bravery Decorations and Awards. Awarded the Star of Courage and awarded the Bravery Medal and awarded the Group Bravery Citation, Mr Timothy John Bunyan, Mr Adam John Pearson. On the evening of the 5th of September 2014, Mr Timothy Bunyan assisted in the rescue of a truck driver after an accident near Charleville in southwestern Queensland, an incident at which Mr Adam Pearson, then a sergeant with the Queensland Police Service, also attended. At about 9pm, a B-double truck carrying over 52 tonnes of a highly explosive chemical crashed off the Angiala Creek Bridge on the Mitchell Highway and burst into flames. The driver, who was severely injured, managed to get out of the truck's cabin and crawl up onto the bridge. Mr Bunyan was first on the scene and was soon joined by another truck driver. The men noticed that the cabin of the overturned truck was well alight and beginning to melt. Minor explosions were occurring as black smoke and 10 metre high flames were visible. Despite the considerable risk to their safety, they chose to stay and administer first aid and provide comfort to the injured truck driver. Four Queensland Fire and Emergency Services firefighters from the Charleville station then arrived and despite the risk of a major explosion, stayed to assist the injured driver. Not long after, the burning truck exploded, sending debris into the air. A second explosion and shockwave quickly followed. Mr Bunyan, the other passing truck driver, the injured truck driver and the four firefighters sustained significant injuries as they were about 30 metres from the exploding vehicle. Meanwhile, Sergeant Pearson had recalled himself to duty after witnessing a fire vehicle travelling to, travelling to the incident site. He obtained information regarding the dangerous cargo that the truck was carrying and immediately headed to the scene, stopping his vehicle approximately 150 metres behind the second parked fire vehicle. As he contacted VKR Charleville to provide a report, the second explosion occurred and a subsequent shockwave caused extensive damage to the surrounding area. Sergeant Pearson was briefly knocked unconscious and the blast caused the windscreen of his vehicle to shatter. Believing there could be no survivors, Sergeant Pearson got himself to his feet and attempted to stop other responders from heading into the explosive area. As other colleagues arrived, they noticed lights coming from the crash scene as the four firefighters and the other truck drivers emerged with injuries. Sergeant Pearson then attempted to enter the site but was restrained due to the injuries he had sustained. He was later transported to Charleville Hospital for treatment. Meanwhile, Mr Bunyan was still assisting the injured truck driver when QPS officers arrived at the scene. A Queensland Ambulance Service paramedic arrived and treated Mr Bunyan and the injured truck driver who were then removed from the scene as toxic smoke from the surrounding debris began to cover the crash site. By his actions, Mr Bunyan displayed conspicuous courage and is awarded the Star of Courage and the Group Bravery Citation. By his actions, Mr Pearson displayed considerable bravery and is awarded the Bravery Medal and the Group Bravery Citation. awarded the Star of Courage and awarded the Bravery Medal, Mr Cameron Dean Caulfield, Mr Jaden Riley Caulfield, Ms Kalia Ray Caulfield, Master Zane Luke Fields. In the evening of the 11th of April 2014, <clears throat> Mr Cameron Caulfield, Mr Jaden Caulfield, Ms Kayla Caulfield, 
provide assistance to their mother who had been wounded during a domestic violence assault at Chambers Flat in Queensland, an incident during which Master Zane Fields also provided assistance to their youngest sister. Cameron, aged 12 at the time, Jaden, aged 14 at the time, Kayla, aged 9 at the time, and Zane, aged 4 at the time. Their youngest sister and their mother were at home when they heard noises outside the house. Concerned for their safety, they all moved into a bedroom. The mother went to investigate the noise and, on approaching the front door of the house, saw the offender, who was her ex-husband. She immediately ran back to the bedroom, locking the door. The offender broke down the bedroom door and fired a gun at the woman, wounding her in the arm. As the offender reloaded the firearm, Cameron elbowed the man in the stomach, grabbed the firearm and ran and hid it outside. Cameron returned to the bedroom and as the offender continued to assault his mother, he and Jaden grabbed hold of the offender's arms to prevent further injuries. Whilst Cameron and Jaden struggled with the offender, Zane was able to escape outside with his younger sister, who, had earlier, who he had earlier placed under a bed to keep safe. Meanwhile, Kayla helped her mother to her feet, guided her through the house and out the back door. She then located the first aid kit and began to treat her mother's injuries. A short time later, Cameron and Jaden were also able to exit the house. By their actions, Mr Cameron Caulfield, Mr Jaden Caulfield, display conspicuous courage and are awarded the Star of Courage. For their actions, Ms Kayla Caulfield and Master Zane Fields displayed considerable bravery and are awarded the Bravery Medal. Awarded the Bravery Medal, Sergeant Kyle Craig Bates, Mr Edward William Bennett, Mr Neil Peter Paulson. On the evening of the 8th of March 1990, Sergeant Kyle Bates, then Constable Bates, Mr Edward Bennett, then Constable Bennett, and Mr Neil Paulson, then Constable Paulson, all of the Queensland Police Service, launched a police rescue catamaran to go to the assistance of two men on a vehicle, on a vessel, located off Byron Bay. The police also sought the assistance of a larger catamaran crewed by members of the Air Sea Rescue Service. For approximately four hours, the rescue catamarans battled rough seas and gale force winds. The Air Sea Rescue Service vessel became incapacitated, leaving the police rescue catamaran to continue on as the weather conditions worsened. At 2 a.m., the stricken vessels the stricken vessel was located with two men aboard. Despite debris in the water from the damaged craft, the police vessel was navigated close enough to float a life ring to one of the men, who was then pulled aboard. The second man drifted away in the huge seas, but was eventually located and pulled aboard. As the police vessel made its return, it was continuously pounded by huge waves, which caused breaks to the, breaks to the rigging and threatened the crew's ability to maintain communications and to operate the engines. By their actions, Sergeant Bates, Mr Bennett and Mr Paulson displayed considerable bravery and awarded the Bravery Medal.
awarded the Bravery Medal, Mr. Sean Jeffrey Brock Dillon, Mr. Anthony Vincent Smith. On the evening of the 8th of April 2013, Mr. Sean Brock Dillon and Mr. Anthony Smith assisted two girls who were being assaulted by a man behind Rosewood State Skate Park in Rosewood, Queensland. Mr. Brock Dillon and Mr. Smith were skateboarding at Rosewood Skate Park when they heard some people behind the skate park arguing. After approximately 10 minutes, Mr. Brock Dillon and Mr. Smith left the skate park and went to investigate the argument. They found several people in a makeshift camp drinking alcohol. With them was an older man who was physically assaulting two female teenagers. The offender grabbed one girl before hitting her in the face. She fell to the ground with the offender then falling on top of her. Mr Brock Dillon immediately moved towards the offender, jumped onto his back and began to wrestle with him. During the struggle, he was stabbed, receiving life-threatening injuries. Mr Smith unsuccessfully tried to separate the two by pulling on the offender's clothing and then struck the offender with a skateboard, causing the offender to stand and lunge at him with a knife. Mr Smith also received stab wounds. The offender then ran from the camp was arrested by police several hours later. By their actions, Mr Brock Dillon and Mr Smith display considerable bravery and are awarded the Bravery Medal. Awarded the Bravery Medal, Mr Matthew David Clark. On the evening of the 24th of November 2013, Mr Matthew Clark assisted at a house fire in Forest Lake, Queensland. Mr Clark was driving through Forest Lake when he observed a large amount of smoke through nearby parkland. He immediately performed a U-turn and drove in the direction of the smoke and came upon a house which was on fire. Mr Clark called emergency services and sprinted down the driveway. As he neared the building, he saw a young male with a garden hose coming from the right-hand side of the house, yelling for help. The male then entered the building through the front door. Mr Clark hunched down and peered through the open front door. In the dimness, he saw the young man was aiming the hose at a closed door, and a female was near the rear of the room. As the room was filling with smoke, Mr Clark, who had now entered the house, instructed both occupants to leave immediately. When they were moving towards the front door, Mr Clark was advised that an older, unconscious man was lying on a mattress in the room. He picked the man up carried him in, and carried him outside. Despite the dangers, he re-entered the building to check that no other occupants were inside. By his actions, Mr Clark displayed considerable bravery. Awarded the Bravery Medal and awarded the Commendation for Brave Conduct, Mr Scott Hunter, Mr Ian Leslie Faulkner, Mr Colin Regan Josephsky, Mr Neil Warren Studholm. On the morning of the 28th of January 2013, Mr Hunter, Mr Faulkner, Mr Josephsky and Mr Studholm assisted in the rescue of people trapped by floodwaters in North Bundaberg, Queensland. Mr Hunter, a Queensland Fire and Emergency Services firefighter, was tasked with assessing the rescue of about 80 people who had become stranded at a service station in North Bundaberg. The streets surrounding the service station were inundated with fast flowing water as a result of heavy rains. Mr Faulkner, who had a small boat, was requested to transport Mr Josefsky a supervisor at the Bargara fire station in the fast rising and debris filled waters to the area near the service station to assess the situation. Mr Hunter realised that the boat he was in was unsuitable for the ensuing task, so he enlisted the assistance of Mr Studholm, who was nearby and had a flat bottom boat. 
An anchor rope was tied to a power pole and then threaded through the boat's carry handles, allowing the vessel to be used as a punt. With no swift water training, Mr Hunter entered the waist-high swirling water, shuffled against the rapids to reach the stranded victims. He prioritised the victims, rescuing the elderly and children first, and despite the danger caused by the swiftly flowing water, ferried them on the punt, with the assistance of Mr Jaseski and Mr Studholm, to a nearby evacuation area. With the evacuation fully complete, Mr Hunter, without ropes or equipment, re-entered the fast-flowing water to check buildings on the other side of the street for further stranded people. By his actions, Mr Hunter displayed considerable bravery and is awarded the Bravery Medal. For their actions, Mr Faulkner, Mr Joseski and Mr Studholm are awarded the Commendation for Brave Conduct. Awarded the Bravery Medal, Mr Marcus Wilson, NSC. In the afternoon of the 11th of October 2015, Mr Wilson was involved in the rescue of several people following a fatal helicopter crash in Kabul, Afghanistan. At about 4.15pm, a British Royal Air Force Puma helicopter crashed on a road junction in Kabul. Mr Wilson ran towards the downed aircraft to assist. There was a significant amount of aviation fuel pouring from the ruptured tanks and the cockpit had been partially torn open, with only one of the two pilots showing signs of life. As an Australian Army officer prepared to climb into the passenger compartment, fire extinguishers were activated, releasing intensely noxious fumes and smoke. People near the aircraft were forced to withdraw until the fumes subsided. Mr Wilson approached the scene and entered the wreckage as the injured were slowly being extracted and treated. Mr Wilson began to treat and recover some of the injured as a large crowd began to assemble, impeding rescue activities. At this point, the Australian Army officer assumed command and control, establishing an initial cordon and moving all non-essential people outside of the perimeter. Despite the threat posed by leaking fuel, the possible detonation of explosives and the no noxious gas from the fire retardant system, Mr Wilson remained inside the fuselage, triaging the injured and assisting with their treatment and evacuation. By his actions, Mr Wilson displayed considerable bravery and is awarded the Bravery Medal. Awarded the Commendation for Brave Conduct, Mr Mark Adrian Davison. On the afternoon of the 22nd of December 2015, Mr Mark Davison rescued two women who were caught in a rip near Coolum Beach in Queensland. Mr Davison was at Stummers Creek near Coolum Beach when he observed two females struggling in the water, waving their arms in the air signalling for help. He immediately entered the water and swam to the first female. On reaching her, he provided reassurance about her friend and informed her that she was very close to a sandbank. He then guided her in the direction of the sandbank before heading out to the second woman, who was panicking, gasping for air and exhausted. He then guided the second woman to the sandbank, but she was swept back out to sea on two occasions. On the third attempt, Mr Davidson managed to swim the woman to shallow water, where she was assisted to safety on the shore. For his actions, Mr Davison is awarded the Commendation for Brave Conduct. <clears throat> awarded the Commendation for Brave Conduct, Ms Belinda Kate Donkers. 
Late in the evening of the 11th of December 2015, Ms Belinda Donkers, a paramedic, assisted a colleague who was being attacked in the back of an ambulance at Upper Coomera in Queensland. Ms Donkers and a colleague were dispatched to assist a male who was unconscious in a car on the side of the road. On reaching the man, they placed him in the ambulance and drove towards Gold Coast University Hospital. Ms Donkers was at the wheel while her colleague treated the unconscious male. Suddenly the man regained consciousness and began to attack Ms Donkers' colleague. She immediately stopped the vehicle, radioed for emergency backup and yelled to the man to stop. She then went to the back of the ambulance, opened the doors and attempted to coax the offender away from her colleague. The man then leapt from the vehicle towards her and as she ran back to the driver's side of the ambulance and drove away from the immediate area. She then provided first aid to a colleague and they continued to monitor the offender from a safe distance until other emergency services arrived. For her actions, Ms Donkers is awarded the commendation for brave conduct. Your Excellency, that concludes this morning's awards. Could I now invite you to address the recipients and their guests? Thank you, Official Secretary. Kay and I extend a very warm welcome today to the awardees, their families, their friends and colleagues, and of course our official guests. I at once acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands around Brisbane, the Turrbal and Yagara peoples, and extend my respect to their elders past and present. As is clear from the citations you've just heard, this investiture ceremony is devoted in its entirety to the conferring of bravery awards on residents of Queensland. Some of the incidents mentioned in the citations may have faded from our collective memory. Ultimately, it doesn't matter whether some of these events are more clearly remembered in the community than others. Whatever the time period, situation and circumstance, the courage shown by our awardees had one quality in, com in common. It was simply remarkable. They faced fire, explosion and flood, violent assailants, dangerous seas and a helicopter crash. In every case, they put themselves in harm's way. And I mean real <clears throat> heart-stopping danger, not moderate risk. They did that to protect, defend and save others. In some cases, the others were members of their own family. In some cases, they were total strangers. The danger often arose suddenly and unexpectedly, with little time to weigh up the pros and cons of action or inaction. In every case, today's award recipients chose to go to the assistance of others. I don't believe our recipients would object to being called ordinary Australians. There is no distinctive profile, profession or background common to them all. Clearly, there is no minimum age qualification either. Four of today's recipients were aged between four and 14 when they protected and aided their mother and their youngest sibling. In the face of a brutal assault, that kind of courage would be exceptional in an adult. In such young people, it's beyond exceptional. If my experience of bravery awards is any guide, the only description all of today's recipients might object to is brave. But they are the only ones in this room and in the community who would question that description. Every other Australian would have no doubt that it is right and proper to see our awardees here today having their bravery recognised through the conferring of prestige national awards. We should be conscious of the fact that three of today's awards are the second highest level of civilian recognition for bravery, the Star of Courage, and that several of today's awardees received two awards, one individual, the other a group bravery citation recognising that their personal courage and their efforts as part of a group 
are worthy of separate recognition. Now, it's well nigh impossible for us to fully understand the experience our awardees have been through, but we should be aware that these intense, often traumatic experiences can have an impact on the rescuers, as it were, as well as the rescued. For that reason, we as a community should take great care of the exceptional people we honour today. Although we can't fully understand the experience that these wonderful fellow Australians have undergone, we can at least respond with great humility, admiration and deep gratitude for their courage. Today's awards are a manifestation of that admiration and gratitude. On behalf of all Australians, I congratulate all today's Bravery Award recipients on the great honour the community has bestowed upon them. I thank them on behalf of those whom they bravely sought to save or protect, and I thank them on behalf of all Australians for inspiring us to seek out the courage in ourselves and for showing us the way to a more caring and compassionate community. Thank you all. Thank you, Your Excellency. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for the Governor's departure and vice regal salute. Thank you, Your Excellency. Could I invite you and Mr. Jersey to retire while we organise recipients for a photo? Thank you.